emergency? Well, I, I can tell you at a very young age I realized that I wanted to be a police officer and, and I kind of guided my all my actions in my life that way. Um, I tried to abide by the law, not do anything wrong, and if I did, not get caught. <laughs> um, but I grew up in Montreal, Canada, and my my dream as a child was to be a Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and at the time I couldn't because I was not Canadian, I was a landed immigrant. Um, so I graduated from high school, came down to Maryland, and I enrolled at Chesapeake College, and after Chesapeake College and my associate's degree, I went to Taos and got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I still wanted to be a police officer, and I got an offer from one of my college lacrosse uh, teammates. He was a chief of police in Greensboro in Caroline County to join that department. I joined, and as soon as I joined there, I realized that I wanted to be a Maryland State Trooper. So I was there for two years or so, and then I became a state trooper. Uh, and I had an amazing career. I had a 30-year career with state police, retiring as lieutenant colonel. And fortunately, out of the academy, my first assignment was the Chestertown Detachment. And that was in 1985. And it was the very first place that I worked as a trooper, fell in love with the area. Um, with the police departments that were here and the sheriff's office and just the people in general. Uh, unfortunately for the state police, kind of like the military, the higher in rank you go, the further away from home they send you. And I never was actually able to ever come back here to work routinely. Uh, part of my job led me back to Kent County in an oversight way, but never directly working here. Uh, I retired in 19 or 20, 2015 as a lieutenant colonel having served 30 years with the Maryland State Police. The, I had the opportunity with Wayne Darrell retiring to uh, try to be, to try out the King County Office of Emergency Services uh, as my next career move. And while someone would seem it was natural, uh, it was actually one of the most rewarding moves that I made beyond being a Maryland State Trooper because it finally allowed me, uh, after 30, almost 40 years, to come back and serve Kent County um, as a trooper. I got married here, raised my children here, uh, worked for here, but not near here. Uh, so finally coming back to serve the citizens of Kent County has become a pretty interesting challenge. Um, I can tell you we work hand in hand with a lot of the volunteer fire companies as well as the Kent and Queen Anne Rescue Squad and I have a pretty good relationship with each one of them and it's kind of a symbiotic relationship where we realize we need the volunteers as well as the paid employees of the Office of Emergency Services to, to provide the protection the King County needs. Yep, it would come to the 911 Center, which is uh, right across the hall, and we're, we're staffed there with uh, normally three and sometimes four 911 specialists that that can uh, not only answer the call but dispatch the whether it's the King County Sheriff's, Rock Hall Police, Chestertown Police, or any of the volunteer fire companies as well as the rescue squad. The call comes in, and and their protocols. Um, that, that each 911 specialist follows, and it's their national protocols. And depending on each situation, there, there I won't say there's a script, but that there is a, uh, there's guidance on how, how exactly who should be dispatched and how they should be dispatched. The don't, only difference is who has jurisdiction, whether it would be the Chestertown Police Department, Rock Hall Police Department, Kent County Sheriff's. Um, if it, if it were an issue involving the state, any state resources, it would be transferred to, say, like the Maryland State Police Barrack in Centerville. Uh, additionally, from the fire side, the co fire calls would be dispatched from, from the 911 center. So to any of the, whether, whether we're Rock Hall, Betterton, Galena, Kennedyville, Millington, 
uh, or Chestertown fire companies, the call would be dispatched from here as well and tracked here. So all of the resources that are needed and resources that are allocated are tracked through here. There are, I, I won't say, it, so if you go through protocols, and, and I can show you afterwards, that there are actual flip cards and computer programs where if somebody says, I'm bleeding, right away they start asking questions. They get you, the same time they're asking the questions, don't get me wrong, it's already being dispatched. And a lot of people get upset with, I, 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 I can't answer this, I just need to, I need someone to come help. They're already on their way. I, th I think one of the misconceptions is that because we're rural, we can't adequately serve our citizens. Uh, we are very fortunate in King County to have the volunteers that we do. Um, the fire service is 100% volunteer at the current time. Emergency medical services are a little different. Um, they've evolved from uh, 25 years or so of, of a one part-time paramedic deputy uh, into we have 30 emergency care providers right now that are that are paid by the county and we not we not we staff not only our personnel but in some stations we in Rock Hall and say Galena we assist their EMS personnel with getting calls out. So one of the problems with with 911 and understanding 911 is the only time you deal with it is in your time of personal crisis. You need help for someone you love. Uh, there's someone that maybe you don't love that is, is giving you agitation and, and it's a true call for service. Um, the biggest issue that we have in this county is the, the distance covered. So we're, we're not concentrated. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of deputies working there, a certain amount of uh, paid uh, emergency medical providers. Um, and then you have the volunteers that answer the call. Uh, it, it's just a matter of anyone that know anyone that's dialed 911 knows someone's going to answer and knows that appropriate help will show up. Um, it's one of the unsaid things that actually occurs and people probably expect to occur and hope they never need it. Kind of like fire or life insurance. So one of the things that I remember President Fithian asking me when I interviewed for this position were what would I do about recruitment? And um, believe it or not, recruitment in, in volunteer organizations uh, is dwindling or, or decreasing. I can tell you that from from what I'm experiencing talking to the fire chiefs and the chief of the rescue squad, uh, if you were to drive by the Chestertown Volunteer Fire Company, if you look at their billboard, it says volunteers needed. Um, it sounds like a societal statement, but volunteerism as a whole, I think, is diminishing. I think one of the biggest things that needs to happen uh, is fostering a sense of not only uh, knowledge of what firefighting and emergency medical services in Kent County are, but how people can get involved. I think that uh, fire cadet or emergency medical services cadet programs could be something to consider. One of the things that I was speaking to uh, the fire chiefs and um, the rescue squad president was almost creating or trying to consider like a, a cadet program that somehow with the Board of Education uh, could incorporate community service hours. Yeah. I honestly think that public safety f from a civic standpoint is one of the most basic and most important obligations that we have to our citizens, whether it's the state of Maryland or Kent County or any of the incorporated towns in Kent County. Um, I think people need to know that when they dial 911, someone is going to answer. And uh, from the volunteer standpoint, someone is going to be able to fight the fire. Uh, and from a medical services standpoint, either a volunteer or a paid paramedic or medic can show up and give the care needed.